Okay, so you ever notice when some people every now and then say things like, Oh, whatever happened with this big Evergrande scare? That's all I heard last week and now I hear nothing. See, everything's fine. Just a big media scare tactic. What a joke. So these are what we call in the industry, uh, clowns. Uh, I heard this whatever happened with the Evergrande scare type of nonsense twice yesterday, twice more today. You know why I'm hearing this? Because over the past two days, the Hong Kong markets have been, what we call in the industry, closed. Closed. No buying or selling of listed securities. Closed. Yesterday, Hong Kong was closed due to inclement weather. Today, the market was on holiday. Uh, and when the market is closed, there is nothing to report. And therefore, there is silence from the media. And therefore, there is silence from the broader public about the subject. And that's why, Mr. Clown, you're not hearing anything as of late. I heard this like repeatedly through from the beginning of the month when China was off for two days towards the end of September and off for the first seven days of October. And when Hong Kong or China are closed, it means no corporate statements about not paying out coupons, for example. You know, not even the PBOC needs to say anything. But just because there's a holiday, it doesn't mean that hundreds of billions in liabilities disappear or that unpaid obligations are forgotten or that asset sales aren't necessary to shore up liquidity, or that wealth management customers no longer want their principal back in full and on time, or that over a million people who put down payments on properties are cool with just half a finished kitchen, or that suppliers' accounts receivables have shrugged off not getting paid in exchange for their goods and services already provided, or that state-owned banks are told to take a hit, or that other leverage players can issue debt to refinance, or that cross defaults are ring-fenced and Asia High Yield Credit has stabilized. Or that Xi Jinping and the PBOC have taken the gun off the forehead of the Chinese corporate elite or the fallen devils. It seems that Western investors, and not everybody of course, and not only Western investors either, don't even get me started on the internationally blind and deaf Japanese long-only asset manager living in their own mental North Korea. But by and large, a huge portion of Western markets people are completely oblivious to basic things like market open and close, despite them being on a calendar. Uh, but what Hong Kong or China markets close really seems to mean is, I'm feeling bullish today for some reason and let's buy the dip. And that some reason is day-to-day -day media coverage. So here's what I'm talking about. The Western sentiment on Evergrande or Hong Kong or China markets or even the broader Western markets seems to be highly dependent on market participants' exposure to news flow. And news flow is dependent on market activity, which is fine and normal. But here's how it works. No green and red blinking tickers moving in Hong Kong. No news out of Hong Kong or China for that day. And no headlines means no subconscious negative sentiment. And no headlines also means that the clowns come out with the, oh, whatever happened to the Evergrande fairy tale? It's so quiet. And, and saying all this without realizing, dude, markets are closed. So take a look at this that I just kind of whipped up very quickly. This is... Google search trends for the term Evergrande News from the United States, um, and I've marked them with Hong Kong holidays. And you can see on September 22nd and October 1st when Hong Kong market was closed for holidays and therefore Evergrande didn't trade, nor did the ATMs, uh, search interest plummets. It then subsequently rises when Hong Kong reopens. Now you'd think that there'd be an increase in searches for uh, Evergrande when the market is closed due to the absence of headlines for the day, but no, it's the other way around. When people aren't reminded that Evergrande or the Hang Seng Index is, you know, a thing, they forget that that thing exists. Now, take a look at this very simple daily bar chart of the S&P. Uh, since September, which was the worst month for the index since March 2020, and when Evergrande headlines really started to pick up. Markets are on a decline, and that decline escalated sharply, and closing in the red for 10 out of 11 nearly consecutive days. Uh, as every single day there was one headline after another on Evergrande or the Hong Kong market as a whole or specific sectors. And obviously none of these are positive headlines. Then Hong Kong takes a holiday, news flow pauses, SPX finally records a gain. Same thing at the end of September heading into October. S&P loses 3% in three days. Then Hong Kong closes for a day for holiday. No negative news flow out of Asia for that day and SPX has a 1.2% gain. Then Hong Kong reopens the following day and SPX has a 1.3% loss. And now, most recently, we had three consecutive days of losses on SPX starting from the end of last week and then the beginning of this week. And then the last two days have been gained. And guess what the Hong Kong market did over the last two days uh, that S&P has been green? Absolutely nothing. Why? 
Uh, yesterday, they closed the Hong Kong Exchange due to bad weather from a typhoon, and today was a scheduled holiday. Now, here's what happens when I take that chart from before of Google Trends for U.S. searches on Evergrande News, and I lay that onto the VIX over the same time period. Oh, how strange of a trend match. Perhaps Evergrande headlines are coinciding with implied volatility and nervousness and fear about markets? Now look, I'm not saying that the S&P is being dictated by the presence or absence of Evergrande or Hang Seng Newsflow. There is an actual non-condescending message that uh, I have, and that is that you really do have to know what markets are open and closed, and it's because you have to be aware of who is active in markets and who is not, and who may be trading ahead of a holiday and moving markets on no news, or who may be catching up to markets after a period of holiday uh, volatility and like residual reaction. And as it relates specifically to China Evergrande, yes, the PBOC pumped billions in liquidity injections, but note that it's completely normal for the PBOC to do so ahead of a long holiday, uh, as it did, as cash withdrawals before public holidays occur. So while, of course, the PBOC was acting to support credit markets and all that, you have to be aware that not everything that the PBOC does or doesn't do may be like Evergrande related in that context. But back to the more rudimentary lesson of all the, you know, Western money managers or talking heads on TV or the Twitter experts on Evergrande or the Hong Kong and China property or equity or credit markets. To all of you, if I, some random guy with half a brain and a calendar, or the ability to notice that the Hang Seng Index hasn't changed in value for more than a day, if I can identify potential correlation, this potential causation, or this potential coincidental relationship trend between S&P daily returns or S&P implied volatility versus North American Google search trends for Evergrande and market holidays, if I can make a potential connection between that or even think to make a potential connection between that, then you, the so-called financial markets professional, can at least be aware of whether or not the markets have been open for trading or not before saying how quiet everyone's gone from talking about Evergrande anymore. And then for everyone else, just be aware of the sheer scale of unawareness that exists out there and what drives this unawareness and that markets are far from efficient. And note that I'm not even making any statement on whether or not Evergrande is a big deal or not, right? I'm merely calling out the clowns. Those who publicly decry headline developments, you know, and what shouldn't be in the news are those who are taking losses from them. And this can be a very useful and exploitable mispositioning, uh, or at the very least, a shade of sentiment read. And then just in general, when you're trying to attribute, like, markets to, you know, news flow, it's just as important or unimportant to note what news isn't on page one uh, as much as it is what is and to then associate with markets. Um, and finally, if you're one of the clowns, I suggest maybe taking a holiday from your making of ridiculous public commentary for your own good. And don't worry, for much like when a car alarm is going off uh, for an hour incessantly at 3 a.m. and it finally shuts up, we will notice your absence. Otherwise, I guess we'll see you in your Hong Kong market commentary on December 27th, Christmas holiday. Cheers.